Okay, let's just start chapter 5, file system labels. In previous video, I uh, create the two file systems, but this new file system don't have their name. So, to create new name for new file system, we can use this one, E2 labels. So, for example, E2 label DVSDA the data. In this case, this uh, DVSDA will have the name as a data. And after that, if I want to use this new partition with the name data, then I can use this kind of command. Mount label data slash data. Then this new partition will be mounted to this directory. And after that, if I want to see all the labels and file system type, then we can use this command, blkid. Number two, tune to uh, 2fs. Normally, we can use this command to adjust the file system parameters. For example, like a reserve blocks, default mount options, or file system frequency like this. First one, dump to fs dvsda in this case maybe this command will show the current sentence for this the new partition and if i want to change some the reserve blocks in this case we can use like this hyphen m 10 percent and uh, c set the default amount options or the partition has their own the default mount options. So in this case, if we want to change or if we want to set the different mount options for each the file system or file the partitions, then we can use like this hyphen O option ACL and user X ATTR like this. And uh, D, disable mandatory file system checking. Normally, the uh, Linux system will check the, all the partitions the, when they are booting time. And but uh, if we don't want to check the, this kind of the file system, we can use this kind of the uh, options: tune to fs hyphen i and hyphen zero hyphen c zero this partition. Then this uh, command will the affect the file system checking not to check this new partition. Okay, then the let's try here. So at first, SF disk hyphen L DVSDA. So in my case, yes, the in previous video, I create two partitions, SDA8, SDA9, like this. So here, let's try to use this one. So first, E2 label DVS. SDA8, this one, data. Sorry, again, E2, uh, DV, SDA8, data. And after that, just uh, here, then we can see the label will be the data. And after that, mount label just the data and data so and after that, let's check here you can find this one as they data mounted this one and almost same tf hyphen h then we can see like this okay and after that blkid so here we can find this one as they ate and SDA9. SDA9 or later we will use this one. So now that you're checking only the SDA8. Okay, and after that, dump uh, E2, E, E2, FS, DV, SDA8. So here, let's check the options. So here, for example, file system volume name now is a data and the last mounted or UUID, magic number, revision, and uh, account, the file system state. The mount of now the this uh, 
a new partition does not have the default mount options. Let's try to give this one later. So if we use uh, this command, we okay again. So if we use the, this one dump to fs, this one we can see this kind of the different informations. So now let's uh, try to tune. Uh, which one? Okay, let's try to acl uh, user x a t t r, and after that new partition t v s d a. SDA8. So, and after that, again, so here. Okay, then let's check this. So, here we can find default mount option user x attr and acl like this. Or tune to fs hyphen i double zero c zero dv sda8. Then this one will let the check this one maximum amount count zero. So this FSCK will let check this partition. Okay, let's go back. Chapter six, mount point and uh, ETCFS step. Now I show you how to mount a new partition with uh, the label data in my case, but if you reboot your Linux system, normally this uh, new partition will be unmounted. So if we want to use this new mount, new uh, partition permanently, we have to register this information to this file etcfs tab. And the etcfs tab has uh, this kind of the field. First one, label. In my case, I uh, define like this: the label data. And so here mount point will be data and the file system tile, uh, type it makes ext3 y ext4 and the default option and the dump for zero and fsck in the file system checking order zero like this so here normally device is a special device file name or file system labels so here we can define two kind the uh, for example like a device file name for example dv slash dv slash s d a 8 like this this is a kind of the device file name eh? one file step label like this the label data like this mount point here so this one will be the path used to access the file system is a, a kind of directory name and the file system time here ext3 ext4 or ext2 was swap or prepad like this Options normally here, default options. Down for frequency, down for frequency. If we set up num uh, number one, it means the daily, number two means every other days. Gentlemen, never dump. So here, dump means the writing this partition information to hard disk or the other devices. And the FSCK here means the file system checking. Normally, Linux system can check file system when putting time. So if we set up zero, it means don't the check the file system. And one means the first. Normally, the root, part, root partition will be set up as a number one first. And the other partition will be have the other number like two, three, four, like this. Then the number two used by mount and FSCK. So this kind of the file system type will be used by mount or FSCK mean the file system checking. And number three may use file system boolean labels in the device field. So we can use as well the volume labels in, in the device field here. And number four mount hyphen a can be used to mount all file systems listed in the etc fs tab so after you configure some line in etc fs tab then we can use this kind of command mount hyphen a number five and uh, or we can use this kind of command to mount file system mount slash in, in this case this is uh, just a device name and the mount label data or label data like this. 
Chapter 7, mount or you mount. So mount, we can use mount to the match device and the mount point. Mount point normally, we normally does the point, the directory name like this. For example, A, denying the permissions to execute the file here. In the home directory, we don't want the users to execute some file. Then we can use this kind of option. No exec. B mount CD-ROM. If we want to the mount the CD-ROM to the specific directory, for example, like mnt seed image. In this case, we can use this kind of options. ISO 9660 file system type and loopback interface like this. C each file is owned by specific. User. And if we want to configure some the mount point were uh, owned by the specific UID GID. So in this case, we can use this kind of option UID 500, GID 510, like this. Demand file system to increase input our performance by reducing disk access. So in this case, we can use this kind of option, no access time, like this. You uh, unmount file system. In this case, normally we use the unmount like this. In this case, this command will the separate device and the mount point. But A cannot unmount the file system in that is in use. Maybe if the some the process what the, some the device is using this file system. In this case, we cannot use this command. And sometimes we want to the remount some uh, file system. In this case, we can use option remount like this. Okay, then the try uh, use this one. Okay, first one. Uh, now we uh, create new the file system, and after that, let's go fs tab. So here, let's try to add, or in my case, label BEL will be data, and the mount point will be data, and the file system ext4, and the default option, and the dump for zero file system checking zero, like this. Okay, and after that, mount hyphen A. So let's try to use mount command. So now we can see this option and almost in the F hyphen H like this. So now we can uh, use this data. How can, okay. Uh, so let's try to uh, copy by scale to data so let's try to here so in this directory i found this directory name and after that now i'm this uh, directory data will be around the 15 megabyte okay and after that let's try to use uh, Okay, the next one. Okay, now I use the mount command and uh, okay, if I want to use the amount, okay, let's try to. In this case, for example, okay, here, let's test. You mount dv, okay, uh, okay, data. So here now this, the message said like this, data device is busy because here I'm staying here. So the, this one, I cannot use the U mount, but see the I, the exit from this directory. And after that, so now it's not successful to unmount this directory. Okay. And after that, the uh, last part, chapter eight, handling swap files and partitions. Swap space, normally when we uh, install the Linux system, normally we have to at least create two partitions root and swap so here swap space is a supplement to system ram so it means swap is a kind of ram and the process to create the swap file and partitions later if we need to have more 
the swap files in this case we can use this kind of command to create a swap file or partition there are two ways first let's try to make a first swap partitions here using f disk first using f disk create a new partition as a swap partition in my case i will use sda9 so after creating new partition for swap we can use this command mk swap db sda9 and after that we have to restore this new partition to etc fs file like this db sda9 swap swap default zero zero and after that swap on hyphen a then this command will activate this new swap partition and at that swap on s then we can see all the information for swap and if we use the, the command free then we can check all the memory size b create swap file except swap partition we can also increase the swap space using the creating swap file first one dd if mean the info file dv0 or f the alpha file will be swap file and the block size and the count 100 so this one will be 100 megabyte so in this case we will create one uh, one more the swap file with the size 100 megabyte and after that mk swap same and if we want to register here it is cfs tab swap file swap swap default zero zero and of that activate this new swap file swap on hyphen a and after that checking the all total size and also we can check the swap total size using pre okay then the, let's try to use this one first try to use the swap partition okay f disk here let's check first dvsda so in my case i have already the sd9 here let's try to use this new partition first uh, let's try to mk swap devsda9 here so and after that let's try to register this new information to fs tab here okay then okay so here okay then after that so here let's uh, in my case dv sda9 in my case and uh, will be swap and partition type as well swap and option default and zero and zero okay and after that uh, here swap on hyphen a and after that swap on hyphen s and hyphen s so now normally the originally the estate the partition by st3 was the swap the file was swap directory so when i installed uh, this linux system i already allocate around two gigabyte for swap size but now st9 as well is around one gigabyte and after that free so total size swap is around three gigabyte and one more thing, let's try to use the creating swap file dd okay, dv0 and have that alpha file will be swap okay, swap file and the block size will be 124 and count in this case this one will be around 100 megabyte but we want to use one gigabyte just this like this so enter okay and after that mk swap and swap file 
and the uh, etc fs tab so here let's try to register new swap directory okay here swap file and swap swap default zero zero okay and after that swap hyphen a and after that swap s so now sta3 sta9 and swap file so this one is a kind of partition now but the swap file is just a file so let's check so now around 4 gigabyte swap size so if you want to increase the swap size you can use partition and file okay okay in this video I explained the five steps to control Linux file systems. First, you have to recognize this new part using BIOS recognition. And in this case, if we add new the hard disk, then the Linux will recognize this new hard disk as a HDAB or SDAB like this. And after that, if we want to create the partitions, new partitions, in this case, you can use the FDisk, Gparted, or SFDisk like this. And after that, we need to format or make a file system using MKFS. And after that, we need to give exact label for these new partitions using E2 label like this. And after that, we can use this new the partition using mount or etc fs tab okay so far i show you how to control linux file system thank you for watching this video and god bless you see you next video